Welcome to the Supercharged Marketing Podcast. I'm Pius, the VP of Growth at Lumen5, an AI video creator made by marketers for marketers. This podcast is a rally call for those who believe in purposeful content, brand storytelling, and thought leadership. We feature insights and best practices from forward-thinking marketers and B2B leaders, daring you to stand out in the rapidly evolving world around us. Are you ready to supercharge your marketing? Hi, everyone, and welcome to our season two finale of the Supercharged Marketing Podcast. We've had so many fun and insightful conversations over the last year. And to end things off, we're compiling all of our best moments into a super compilation episode. We've had conversations with people ranging from industry leaders in marketing to AI thought leaders, where we talked about and focused on AI and video and content marketing and thought it'd be fun to bring you the best of around each of these topics. Now, the first episode we're featuring is with me, Pius, and our CEO and founder, Mike, where we discuss the past, uh, present, and future of AI. And this was at the start of the AI boom back in January. So here's what we had to say. It's such an interesting time. As a business leader, I, I think of AI as an opportunity during a time of economic uncertainty. AI allows each of us as individuals to produce more, be more effective and more efficient with less resource. But on the flip side, I also talk to marketers who are afraid. You know, what does AI mean? Are jobs getting replaced? So I'm curious, uh, in your conversations with marketing leaders around the world, what's the sentiment with AI? Is it fear? Is it excitement? What, what's going on? <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of both. Um, actually, it's a little bit of fear, a lot of excitement. I think the, the majority of marketers realize the opportunity that AI presents. I mean, automation isn't new to, to humans in, 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 in our lifetime, right? We look at things and automation really is a way to, to enable us to do our jobs easier, to do our jobs better. I think a lot of marketers understand this. And listening to a lot of podcasts, seeing a lot of posts and seeing what a lot of marketing conversations are really about, the question isn't, is AI a good or bad? It's more so how do we make AI work for us and how do we become the 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 great questions uh, the the, ask, the askers of these great questions as marketers i think a lot of times even working with contractors or or different writers in the past the the end goal is what you have to articulate to get that great result so to write a great brief for for a contractor is the same as writing great brief now in, in tools like ChatGPT. But when we're looking at the future, future of AI and where it's going, I think a lot of that is is uncertain. To to your point, um, looking at how it can run businesses and how it can can shift marketing, a lot of it is still unknown at this point. So, kind of throwing the question back to you, Mike, where do you see this? I know, I know we've in, as Lumen Five, we've really delved into AI for for a little while in in the life of of our company and our business. Where did you where do you see this coming as, as someone who's played in this field for for a while? Yeah, yeah, certainly something I've been thinking about for a long time. And personally, I, I'm excited and optimistic about the changes that's happening now. One thing I'd point everyone to is there's always resistance in the face of automation and changes, but rarely do people win the battle against uh, automation and technology. And so um, if anyone listening responds to the idea of AI with fear or worry about it, does this mean that my job's going to be replaced? Um, my strong encouragement is to flip your thinking against defensive or offensive thinking, right? The, what are the opportunities that AI enables? And I think the, the quote that sums it best is, your job is not going to be replaced by AI, but your job may be replaced by someone who's really good at using AI. And I think that's that that really captures my my perspective on the matter is the best marketers of tomorrow are going to be the marketers who fully incorporate what AI can do into their day-to-day -day work. So for those who are not familiar or haven't played around with some of the new tools that are available, uh, OpenAI released a new tool called ChatGPT, among other things like Dolly and Whisper, so lots of AI tools coming out. But ChatGPT is what they call the language model. It allows marketers to almost interactively and dynamically collaborate with an artificial intelligence. You can say, write me a script, uh, a video script, 30 second, talking about a new problem emerging in my industry. And it, it just gives you a very well, often very well written script. Um, and, and one of the mistakes I see is marketers end that process too early. You know, they ask for scripts, AI writes the script, they don't like it, and they say, okay, well, I'll just go back and do it on my own. But um, when I study the best marketers in the industry and how they're currently using AI, 
they talk to it like someone who sits next to them. They go, write me a script. Uh, I don't like this. Can you simplify this? Can you make it more casual? Can you give it an uplifting tone? I want you to explain and elaborate this piece further. So the back and forth dialogue, collaborating with AI, viewing AI as a partner and not just a brainless tool, I think is the key to how marketers can get a lot done this year with less resources. If you think about it, it's expensive to hire a, someone who sits next to you and collaborates with you uh, with moments notice always available. And if you can learn to do that with AI, you can do more with less. Yeah, I, I love that. And the that's also been the war on the street with marketers is we're going to be seeing a lot more commodity content that's put out uh, in in the coming year with the help of AI. And that that differentiating between average content and really great content is going to grow a little further. Because when you look at really great content, that's the content that speaks to you. That's the content that understands the issues that you're going through, the problems that you're going through, and speaks to, to connect the dots. And a lot of the AI pieces aren't able to do that, right? So if you stop too soon and ask it the right, ask it the wrong questions too soon, you're going to have a lot of the same answers that every other marketer asking it the questions up to that point will receive as well. So you start creating a lot of this commodity content. And when you go further, you know, looking at AI as fellow writers in a fellow room to help you when when you're blocked and when you're stuck or coming up with different ideas that un, un, unblock and undam other floodgates of ideas that you might have and using it as a prompter to create this really great content. I think another differentiator in the coming year will be video and will be thought leadership content from actual people. When, you know, this is a topic that you and I have talked a lot about, Mike, is, is this, this, this connection to now experts, whereas before experts were often left in the, in the back and, and behind. But now with the advent of technology, bringing a lot of experts up front where experts are the thought leaders speaking their points of views from their experience and tenure. And video can bring that to you to a person where, you know, is this real? Is this the real voice and thought of a person? Is this the real opinions of a person? And a lot of that is, is going to be brought to the forefront. And that can differentiate between real thought leadership from influencers who, who know their stuff that people can learn from versus AI generated commodity content that we're yeah, yeah. And I, I think you bring up a great point here. I like, wholeheartedly agree video is going to be a key differentiator in the coming years, especially as these crazy language models get better at writing. All of these great written pieces are going to pop up everywhere. Uh, but video, you can see the person, you know they're there. And I think the best way to collaborate with AI is, again, through a brainstorming process. There is a big difference between taking what AI gives you and publishing it and using AI to get the best out of you. So one thing I personally love to do is I'll, I'll, I'll work with ChatGPT and I'll say, pretend you're a junior marketer. Ask me 10 questions that you're most curious about. And that's great, right? It feeds me prompts, right? It's, it's using prompts for AI to generate prompts that prompts the human who then you can answer questions and go deeper into things. And so that's what I mean by collaborative use of AI. That was such a good conversation introducing AI, but how does this match up with Lumen5 and where we're at now? Where's the future of this going? Is it good or bad? We picked Chris's brain, our co-founder and head of AI, for some insight and his thoughts. Check it out. Yeah, AI is uh, is a classic um, kind of roller coaster technology. It has been around for a long time, been around for 50, 60 years. Uh, and every decade or so, it gets a lot of attention. There's uh, some big leaps forward. Uh, and then kind of the, the rest of the world adapts and, and kind of incorporates a lot of those technologies. Uh, and then it, it just goes back to kind of being more of a research project. For uh, this new wave, um, ChatGPT, which is built on an underlying technology called Large Language Models, LLMs, um, that is this kind of whole new wave of generative AI, um, where the previous AI systems were mostly good at analyzing content and giving you information about it. Um, this new generative AI wave has been better at creating content itself, creating text, creating images. Um, and so it's been really interesting. It's obviously been able to create a lot of different pieces. Uh, and, and we believe it has a lot of impact on kind of the future of video creation as an industry. It obviously, um, the new technology and the idea of using natural language and the computers being able to better understand nat natural language definitely tears down a lot of barriers. Um, you see this in a lot of new tools using um, things like natural language inputs, prompt-based inputs, uh, to make it much more approachable for people. People don't need to understand 
um, all the technical details as much as you would. Um, but also, and this is really relevant to the video creation side, is it can actually work with things that traditionally have been very human um, areas and computers haven't been able to help with a lot. So um, coming up with ideas, uh, helping you rephrase things, write things, draw things, those kinds of skills were traditionally very creative and very um, kind of human only. Um, AI hasn't gotten to a point where it's been, it can do that completely on its own. It's very much uh, kind of a partnership right now where, where people with the technology can like work together to build stuff. But it does mean that people can do things a lot faster and can make things that are probably higher quality than they could do just on their own. I love that you use the word partnership and, and maybe I'll ask Mike this question next is when you when you look at how it's changed business and, and marketers and specifically as, as, as a lot of our, our audience is primarily marketers, how do you see this partnership between AI and marketers playing into how people do business in the future? I think there's a lot of promise and potential for sure. And as Chris alluded to, you know, AI isn't anything new. It's been around for decades, but it's certainly a, a progression of evolution over time. One thing that's really interesting, particularly with computer languages in general, is um, if you're familiar with binary, you know, zeros and ones, and and computers think in binary. And back in the day, if you want to communicate with a computer, you have to learn binary. You have to code in um, that level of abstraction. And then over time, programming lang languages became closer to English. If you think of something like Python, you think of uh, command lines that you might have heard of, like print line. Um, and those are English words. And so over time, we're actually getting closer and closer to being able to communicate with a computer using words that start to be more and more like English. And I think the more recent uh, revolution in AI one that's led by open AI and then large language models that are happening now is it's closer to English than it's ever been. And every single time we get closer to being able to communicate with computers using our own natural language, the more possibilities we unlock. Take for example, when I work with Chris, we use English. We use natural language to work with the people, our coworkers and colleagues. And as AI gets closer to natural language, it actually unlocks the potential for us to interact with AI more like coworkers and colleagues than ever before. So take, for example, if you had to learn a programming language, you have to create a very explicit set of instructions with a set of anticipated outcomes. And that's how we've historically worked with computers. But with large language models, we can now use much more abstract language and say, hey, can you help me brainstorm a few ideas on my next blog post? And AI, generative AI, can help you generate some topics, and you can create a flow where it's conversational. You say to your generative AI companion, oh, great, I like the second topic. Can you create a first draft for this? And then you might edit the draft, and there's, there's this back and forth iteration, which is something that is um, in theory possible before, but unless you were a programming wizard that spent years learning these programming languages, it's incredibly difficult to do. By bringing computers closer to natural language, we unlock the ability for more people to be able to interface with computers and lean on their expertise. And computers are really good at lots of things. And I love that we kind of position this in in the position of a partnership is yes, computers are good at lots of things, like they can process lots of information all at once, they have access to a lot of knowledge, but humans also have our own unique strengths and weaknesses, at least for now. Uh, you know, humans bring a lot of creativity and soul and context of what they're trying to achieve. And when you combine the two, when you can actually share with the machine the context, the strategy, the intentions behind your campaigns, you can then collaborate through these iterative cycles to create something that's better than what either of you individually could have created without each other. Yeah, that's amazing. And when we look at the partnership between tool sets and, and humans, we really can create something that one or the other couldn't create themselves and, and whatnot. Where do you see this changing the skill sets or requirements, I guess, for, for future marketers? And, and what are the skills that are necessary to, to be successful in, in this world of tomorrow? I think the the skills that are necessary are, are going to move upwards more strategically. And that's been true for all of technological developments. You know, we, we used to do a lot of manual labor, which was eventually automated through machinery. And this is the same thing that's happening in the world of knowledge work, where um, not only, let's say as a marketer, not only do you have to think strategically, you also have to be very hands-on, writing the actual content, doing the actual research. Um, and now what we're seeing is that 
with the support of generative AI, the next generation of marketers can focus their skills on thinking more strategically, planning out the channels, planning out the goals, planning out the methodologies we're going to use to measure success and how the impact of each endeavor is going to tie back to our business objectives and leaning on AI to do a lot of the, the manual labor that, that has historically been part of marketing, such as writing, writing blog posts, writing the first drafts, writing press releases, writing SEO strategies, writing documentation. A lot of those things, um, AI can get you 80 or even 90% of the way there. And so the, the marketers of tomorrow are more like the managers of today, like the marketing managers of today, where the skills you'll need is one of having a good eye for quality, being able to uh, perform quality assurance on the work that AI does, not too dissimilar to the marketing managers of today, where you're doing quality assurance on your junior marketers or your intern who just started in their career. And so being able to have an eye for quality, being able to provide good feedback, like any marketing marketing managers of today needs to do in order to help their team grow, um, that skill is going to be more relevant than ever. Can you give good feedback to your AI companions so that they can create better work for you? And then last but not least, it's the strategic side is uh, you can tell your AI companion to write you blog posts, you can write video scripts that you can put up on YouTube, but something has to drive the strategy. Strategy. What does this all mean? How do these all messages and positioning tie back to an overall strategy? And that's something that generative AI isn't going to do for you. It's um, it's there to help you manually, uh, to, to automate many of the manual tasks, which allow you to save time and think more strategically. But the marketers of tomorrow need to get really good at thinking strategically. Such awesome points from Chris and Mike around the implementation of AI and how to effectively and strategically implement AI into workflows, how to accelerate tasks so they're 80, 90% done. Now, our entire episode was around AI and the benefits and risks of using it for businesses and the views of how we've always implemented machine learning into our tool sets. So check out the whole episode for a much deeper dive. Now, what if you could also leverage AI to process data faster and more accurately? Could this data effectively help marketers personalize content, deliver the right message, and run more effective campaigns? Stephen Midgley speaks more on this. You know, the big topic today is artificial intelligence or AI, and everyone's talking about it. It's pretty much impossible to go to a trade show um, and not see AI at every booth. I mean, even if they're not doing AI, they're doing AI. Um, so it, it's interesting, and I think from a marketing perspective, I think what AI, what AI means is it means your know, data is going to get processed at a greater speed and accuracy. It's going to provide with better insight into effective campaigning. And a good use case of AI is around ABM or account-based marketing, uh, and allowing you to. Um, do a better job at personalizing content and delivering the right messaging to the right people uh, with the new ABM program. So I do see a lot of a lot of opportunity for AI when it comes to account-based marketing. Um, you know, we were, were at Imifresh, we're an AI company. We leverage AI for our customers every day um, to deliver better results and how they forecast. Um, but from a marketing perspective, it really, I see the applicability around account, account based marketing and being able to deliver better results, um, and more targeted personalized messaging to, to, um, those, those, um, contacts within our accounts. Amazing. Yeah. And, 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 you know, kind of going back to, to our days at business objects and SAP, when we look at that, you know, uh, back then it was really, we, we looked at business objects as that semantic layer, right. On top of a database that allows you to use like natural human language to take the data that's in certain data warehouses and database, translate that back into human language. But now with AI, the database is just the entirety of the internet. So it's like all the things that are out there and you can really query it and ask it all this information. But now you can you can feed it specific data that 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 spits back that that data that you need to make those data driven decisions, like you said. And it's it's really amazing, kind of where it's gone. And I'm I'm really interested to to see where it's going to go over the next few years as well. Yeah, I mean, I wish we had chat chat uh, GPT when I was at university. It would have been much easier. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, but it is it is. I mean, the evolution of tech it, it is fast, and I think as marketers. 
the, the, maybe the biggest challenge for any marketer is to stay current with the technology and um, stay current with technology, make the right decisions when it comes to tech and be able to use that data for, for, for action um, and deliver results for the business. That's great stuff from Steven. Uh, I learned a lot from that conversation. And even though we only touched on AI at the surface level, we dove really deep into analytics and data and marketing. So check out the whole episode for that. Steven has such a wealth of experience and was such a fun guest and friend to have on our podcast. Next up is Alice Ko, and her AI take is that it's here to empower you, not to take away your job. She views AI as a helper, like an assistant, and not as a replacement. So have a listen. A lot of startup teams and a lot of larger enterprise teams too, especially in this economy, you're going to be smaller. You're not going to have the luxury of having an expert for every single marketing channel or every single marketing project. So you need to find ways to empower yourself and your team. So automation and technology now exists to actually empower your team, not take the job away. Chat GPT is on everybody's mind, right? A lot of people are scared. Oh, this is going to take away my job. Oh, I definitely don't. No one's going to need a content marketer anymore. But that's actually not what I've been teaching my past teams. I tell them, you have to learn how to leverage chat GPT and all these AI tools. Don't be scared of them. Empower yourself by learning how to use it. And I'll give you an example. So in my last company I Resolve, um, there was four of us on the marketing team. One specifically was in charge of content. But what I said to them all was, I want all of us to learn how to use chat GPT because not only is this going to fuel your career, this is going to make you an overall better marketer for a few reasons. You no longer have to rely on somebody else to create content for you. If you know what questions to ask chat GPT, you're going to get ideas faster. You can move a lot faster. You'll be more productive. You'll be able to experiment more. You'll be able to drive results faster. So I actually train my team, entire team, not just content marketers, on how to use chat GPT. And um, when I thought about this, like in order to leverage chat GPT, you have to be a really good delegator because chat, chat GPT is like your assistant. It is there to help you. It will never talk back to you. It likely won't disagree with you, right? You won't have conflict with chat GPT. So it's like the best thing that could ever happen to marketers. You just need to know how to delegate. And a lot of marketers get scared about delegating, right? Because they don't want it to seem like, oh, I'm not doing my job or maybe people don't need me. But if you know what questions to ask that bot, you will come out even stronger at the end. Yeah, I love that. And and the, the whole thing of, you know, your your job isn't going to be replaced by AI, but it will be replaced by the marketer who knows how to wield AI and, and, and have that content and experience with them. So that's that's very, very much what we're, we're seeing as well. And yeah, like AI is right now is, is still all within content creation. And, and you touched on a very good point in terms of how it will change the, the way that future marketers will work and what skills marketers will need to kind of grow and hone and, and really learning how to how to take advantage of that. Yeah, exactly. And like I was telling my content marketer, hey, you know what? You th before you thought maybe you could post three high intent articles a week. Now you can post five. This is going to make you more successful. This isn't about getting rid of you. Now we just have ChatGPT. You own GPT. ChatGPT is your assistant. Leverage it. It's there waving at you, just waiting and dying to help you. Yeah. And then this whole narrative that we've been hearing across across our world is really doing more with less. And this is this is really how and, and using that assistant to help you do more with a lot less. And, you know, with budgets being cut, people, resources, everything being cut, this is really the way that, that marketers can do more with less. Exactly. And if you're if you're currently a leader, or if you're looking to become a leader, being proactive with these tools, ChatGPT, Lumen5, even copy.ai, I love. They also have something. So if you, ta if you type in chat.new, it's an alternative version of ChatGPT. So if you want to actually step up as a marketing and content leader, learning how to use these tools is going to actually make you more competitive and unique. 
is going to build your personal brand because you now know how to be 10 times more productive, right? And you enabled your team on how to be 10 times more productive. I always have a great time chatting with Alice. She's such a treasure of content marketing strategies too. So if you're looking for a deeper glimpse into her thoughts and processes, check out her full episode. Up next, we have Christina Minchel, founder of The Brand Audit. Christina has a fascinating and uh, people-centric approach to marketing, looking at it not from a B2B or a B2C outlook, but really from H to H, which is human to human. So it was really great to hear her thoughts around how AI plays into the future of content. I think uh, imagery has, and what we gravitate towards has changed a lot. I think that, um, like I was saying before, that more like polished corporate professional voice has kind of resonated in the past. And now we're seeing the voice of the more raw and human and imagery that really is authentic and real, um, really gravitating um, towards those audiences. And so I think we're going to see this, this dichotomy of real versus fake in the market and um, we're going, as marketers, going to have to kind of balance um, between uh, AI-generated content and real imagery. And I think that there is absolutely a place um, in the world for both. And thinking about how do we leverage some of these AI tools um, to help create content in a very streamlined, efficient, and um, uh, standardized way. Yeah, this uh, I, I was watching this post the other day where I think they were talking about the the new Photoshop and how it can just change images through text, obviously, and, and kind of giving it a, a natural human language and, and changing what that image looks like. And it blew my mind. I was it was like just creating these images that didn't exist before out of text and just changing it around. So, absolutely, I think that as as we move forward, this this real versus fake dichotomy really needs to be looked at. But you know, as if it appeals to to certain people and it creates that personalization that I relate to, then you know, there's what's the harm in it? But I think there's a lot of a lot of folks that are looking at it from a different lens and kind of looking at some of the risks that are involved with there as well. Do you have any thoughts on where AI could potentially introduce risk to brands in, in some of the different content that they create? Yeah, absolutely. With any new technology, there's risks with that new technology. And I think it's all about choosing companies that are really thinking about those ethical impacts. Um, so if you're looking at um, Adobe Firefly and how they're approaching their um their generative AI tool and how they're thinking about involving creators in that process and how they're thinking about making sure that there's ethical and trust and safety built in. And I'm on their beta right now and using it for my own business. And it's like you say, it's it's allowing me to create content in a in an efficient manner for my small small business and able to create really high quality personalized content. Um, that I wouldn't be able to do if I was just choosing stock media, and so I think there's there's a lot of there's a lot of potential, but it's about using companies that are really thinking thoughtfully around that AI space and are kind of putting those those guardrails and those parameters in place. Thanks, Christina. And this rounds us up with Chris Kopek, Marketing Manager at CBRE. It was so much fun to chat with Chris. You'll have uh, to listen in to him speak about video and tech and how it's evolved a ton and how AI is a need to have and not a nice to have for marketers. Um, I think AI is playing such a huge role. We're seeing AI everywhere um, in terms of you know chat GPT and uh, how AI is being used to generate images. It's going to come for the for the video side of things very, very soon, if not already, where you say, I would like, please, a 30-second uh, video of a drone shot over a city skyline with the words, help us help you on it. And it's going to be able to be generated. And it's going to turn video people like me into just uh, hopefully not just editors and people looking uh, at uh, computers doing our job for us. But AI is going to be very important in that as well. And you know, embracing technology has always been something that a marketer has to do to be successful. And, you know, being able to use that technology better than anyone else puts you in a really, really advantageous position. 
And that's it for this Best of AI episode. We gathered up a ton of great snippets from conversations we've had this year with marketing and content and tech leaders in our space and jammed it into our episode today. I hope you found some great insights that can help you in your day-to-day because I know I've learned a lot over this past year from everybody. Jump into their episodes for a ton more around all things strategic and tactical on AI, content marketing, and video. And as always, we want to keep our episodes short and sweet, and I hope that you found value in what you heard today and and all year, as that is our goal, is really to connect you with the industry leaders, with the expertise to share, so we can all grow together. As always, keep making purposeful content in this B2B world, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, hit subscribe and rate us wherever you listen to your podcast, or leave a comment if you're watching on YouTube. If video is not already part of your marketing content, strategy, it's not too late to start. Create amazing videos with Living 5's AI-powered video creator without the need for any design or video editing experience. Check us out at Lumen5.com to supercharge your marketing and follow us on LinkedIn for updates and resources. As always, keep making purposeful content in this B2B world. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.